You get married right now, pick a quarter out of your pocket and flip it because that's the chances of your marriage making it right there. We are supposed to protect our kids, which is one of the problems with, you know, young ladies going to college, moving out, getting their own apartment. They lose that protection. You know, they're kind of out on their own and, and fending for themselves. I don't think that's the way God has it planned. We don't want our children to have to experience the pain of divorce. And that's why we have committed our lives to the courtship process. We want to stack it in their favor instead of just having a coin tossed when they, when they say, I do. I mean, if you're going to be interested in courtship and that's what you plan for your girls, you're going to do something different than dating. Start now. Teach them that courtship is normal, that this is the normal way to do it, and that dating is the unnormal way to do it. Most likely, Savannah's not going to go to college. Um, I no, say I've that, already made the decision. I'm not going to college. <laughs> Her mindset is, I'm not going to go to college. I'm not going to get a degree. I'm going to be married. I'm going to have a family. I'm going to be a mom, and I'm going to be a housewife, and I'm going to be a helpmate to my future husband. Having the protection of, of a man is um, safe. And women, it was Eve that was deceived. Um, I've seen women who are living out on their own and they're very much out of balance. So what do you do? I, I mean, we don't know God's plan. I mean, to say that she's going to have a husband and be a mom. Yep. I mean, we don't know those things for sure. I mean, is, I mean, she could be let down too if that doesn't happen. So how that, do you that is work the direction that, in? that you go in? Because you know that that's God's plan for um, a man and woman to come together and get married. Now it doesn't happen all the time, and if it doesn't, what? I'll stay with mom and dad. I mean, I am very happy right now, and I don't want it any other way. She's planning on being a wife and a mother, and that's what she's training for. Mm -hmm. And if she picks up a career after that, that's secondary. Other than that, the plan is, is that they will be with us until we walk them down the aisle. Dear Heavenly Father, it's so great to be your daughter. Thank you so much for these girls. They are so precious to me for you to give them confidence today that um, whatever they do, they are doing it for you. I think that marriage is crucial. Beautiful, good. Who loves Jesus? Go next. My heart has been asking for a long time, where is my husband? Even since I was probably a young teenager. Good, keep that spine straight. Yes, good. I was searching, like probably most people, searching just for something that would last. Somebody who would really love me deeply and accept me no matter what. And I was not finding that in dating relationships. Here's my crown, Lord Jesus.
I was seeking direction from God of what I felt He wanted me to do to find a husband. That's when I started learning for the first time about courtship. It definitely gives me a sense of security if I do meet someone that I think would be a good mate. I would ask him then to meet with Ron. 20 feet. 20? 17, 14, 12, 6. Ground Zero for the container should give you an interesting look at the inner workings of this type of bridge. OK, so. It's down. It's not up. Oh. <sighs> I started babysitting for Ron and Don right after college. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, I could reach that. Now we're talking. They were also from the South, like me, so I had a kindred spirit with them. All right, there we go. Ah. Oh, so pizza. The things we do for geocaching. Oh, glass crates. Litter bugs. Watch out for that piece of metal there. Oh, and what's that? <laughs> we got a cat. I found it. There you go. He's stealthy. What do we got? Not very much oh, stuff in great. there. Let's sign the logbook and let me get it back down in there. This is very, very public right here. OK. As I was babysitting with them, we would chat after they got home. Oh, there we go. Oh. We were talking one day about courtship. And I told them that I would love to do courtship. She said, I have been praying for several years for spiritual parents. And I was wondering if you and Don would be the spiritual parents for my courtship. Stephanie, where am I at? Where am I at? I felt it was a very serious subject and needed very serious attention. So I told her what I'd do is I'd pray about it. What do you think about what I was I told Don, I said, I don't see how we could really do this for real and not have Kelly under our roof. So we were praying about it. We talked about it a couple of times, and I knew that was wisdom on my husband's behalf. We invited Kelly to move in here, and she's been living with us for seven years. Pleasure to meet you. How you doing? Good. Yeah, doing all right. Good, good, good. Yeah, good. Place on a hot night. Yeah. So if we find out that there is a young man that's interested in Kelly, he needs to come through me. What I was looking for with this meeting is we just get to know each other a little more and interact a little bit, just so we got a relationship that, you know, we can we can decide where to go from here. I love meeting new people, and that is a really cool thing about this position that I have, because I get to meet all these really cool guys. I'm single, I take it? Yeah. Been, yes. Ever been married? No, or? never been married. A lot of times I will meet with a young man, and Kelly doesn't even know it. So I was just kind of curious, you know, yeah. what are you looking for? Yeah, I don't know, just somebody who's spiritual and loves God and that's central. Um, Kelly and I have had numerous conversations and extensive conversations about what she's looking for, what's important to her. You ever watch Glenn Beck? Uh, bits and pieces a little bit. Huh? Yeah. Obama playing around with Israel. What do you think about that? Would you be comfortable with a homosexual elder that wasn't practicing? And I, yeah, I would be. Yeah, I would be. He's a good guy, really nice guy. It's not going to work. Excellent. All right, awesome. Very good. Be blessed, my friend. Thank you. See ya. The way we actually find the guys is very interesting. <laughs> we live our life normally, following what we believe is God's will in our life. So we don't, we don't go guy shopping. We are waiting for God to put the circumstances together. The key for us is we just live a normal life and then we let God handle the rest. When we decided to let Kelly move in, Ron and I made a commitment. She would live here until she married. If I was a guy and I was single, I would marry her. She is so willing to hear God and to be who he wants her to be. Who could not want that for a wife? Tick, 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 tick. Over the years, Ron has met with different people who have come as suggestions to him. 
but there has never been one who I've been interested in who has also been interested in me. All right, ladies. Lay some good eggs for us. It's called my keepsake book because it has everything I want to do when I grow up and stuff. This is me and my husband courting. This is my wedding. That's me and that's my husband. And then this is my honeymoon. They've been working on those notebooks for years. This one is for the Civil War wedding. Kind of copied a dress from that period. The engagement ring. What kind of stone do you have? Traditional. Diamond? Yep. Yeah. This is me with my 20 kids and their kids. This is the wedding dress number two. This is the Civil War wedding? Yes. Where's your husband? Right there. Is he going to wear a Confederate uniform, or...? You bet! <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I won't marry him! <laughs> when you are born a girl, it doesn't matter whether you give a little girl all the guns and G.I. Joes in the world, she's still going to dream about her wedding day. It's just part of being a girl. We have the hormones, we have the makeup, it's who we are. We work very hard to instill purity into our two little girls. One of the big things in our family is the first kiss will be with your husband. The first kiss will be on the altar. If I give away my first kiss before I give it to my husband, then I won't be giving him everything. And it's kind of like a treasure and it's not to just be given away to anybody. We have integrated this into them since they were young, just babies in my lap. I think I know what it is. Okay. One of the first books that was ever read to him was The Princess and the Kiss. Long ago, in a wonderful castle, a beautiful princess was born. When the princess was finally grown, the royal couple gave their daughter a very special gift from God, her first kiss. God gave this gift to you on the day you were born, said the queen, because he loves you so dearly. But use wisdom, my daughter, warned the king, and save your kiss for the man you will marry. Never part with it for the sake of a stranger. He's telling her to save it for her husband because he knows how important it is to be good to your husband all the days of your life. That's even before you meet your husband. It's all the days of your life. The stuff that you're doing now matters to your husband. The next day, a common man came to the castle. He asked to see the princess. I have little to offer you, princess, but I do have one very special gift I can give you. This is my first kiss, princess. I have saved it all my life for you. Would you be my wife? On the day of their wedding, they exchanged their kisses. And God and all the kingdoms sang for happiness. Do I She's crying. <laughs> this is so sweet. The very first kiss. Not many people can say that. It's a treasure. I am saving my next kiss, but it makes me so sad that I don't have my very first kiss to give. It's already given. Yeah. And you can't get it back. Kelly's period of dating and the fact that she has given away her first kiss has definitely impacted her. These are areas in her life that she has given away to another man that she cannot give to her husband. Don and I have to deal with that. We gave away our first kiss to other people. That would be so awesome if I had saved it for her. If I had known to save it for her, if I had even known that that would be so important. It didn't happen, but we're changing that. We're changing that through our kids and they don't have to carry that through their life. Well, if Daddy and I will be guarding your gate, we're not gonna let a wolf or a lion come in, okay?
About a year ago, I was at a party and a friend introduced me to a young man. He was raised with courtship. He was homeschooled. Didn't have a whole lot of interaction until recently he commented on a post I made on Facebook about courtship. He was asking me questions about my past, about my dance classes. It was pretty exciting to find that Ross seemed to be showing interest in me. So right now we're still at the friendship stage and it's okay, but where is this leading here? There is something I've been wanting to talk to you guys about. Just let you know that I've been thinking about this one friend of mine quite a bit. This is going to be a fine line here, and it's going to be a careful thing you're going to have to go over. The important thing is we want to see if God wants to do something with this. You know, then I will need to step in and talk to him and go through your list and see where he stands against your list. You're not stalking him or anything, are you? I haven't stalked him for a while. I, I, stalked him. <laughs> I, have, been, I have been guilty of stalking him, yes. Just relax and guard your heart. Don't try on his name. He's a brother in the Lord right now. A brother in the Lord. We'll just take this one step at a time. We'll just see how God unfolds it. I think we need to invite him over and see what happens. Whenever we have a young man of marriageable age come over into the house, there are those thoughts that kind of come through my head. How am I going to act? How am I going to guard my heart? I think the natural thing for any woman is to just get crazy. It's really hard to control those emotions and to control the desire to want to look pretty, the desire to want to be noticed. So I think it's a huge step to be vulnerable. Too. Yeah, um, yeah, we were delayed getting out, so it was pretty. Well, there was an accident there. or something. Yeah, 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 and the, yeah, and traffic was bad in places. So. But you found it all right. Mm -hmm. So, want some candy corn? God, thank you uh, so much for bringing Ross and Paul and letting them spend the evening with us. Um, we acknowledge that you provide for us and you continue to provide for us. And, and man, we really appreciate that. We love you. Amen. 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 Okay, well then I'll just pass them along. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. It's going to be a full table. That'll make it easier. <laughs> and he just, he ate the rest but that of it. Was it. <laughs> um, it's really good meat. Mm. 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 So you guys have at least one other brother. Two How other many brothers, months? two sisters. You were raised in courtship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Through the books that were the books that were around the house. Mm -hmm. The way the way mom and dad talked about things. You don't start something until you're ready to move it forward to marriage. Whenever you meet you, you meet a girl who's about your age, you start thinking, oh, so I wonder if uh, you start valuing her for wife material, basically. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then I had always wondered about, because the guy is supposed to be initiating and approaching the girl, I wonder, it must just be really frustrating to be the girl because you just don't have anything to do. <laughs> <We're>, uh, <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> focus on your future family.
I was working really hard to guard my heart because there were the emotions. It's really important to me that the guy pursue me, and I respect that a guy is a leader and a pursuer, and that's what I want. I really want him to make kind of the bold first steps. involved in sin, it can grab a hold of you, and then you could be drawn away and decide not to follow Christ. <laughs> the marriage is a picture of Christ and His church. So just the same way that a bride would prepare for being a wife someday, prepare for her husband and prepare for the marriage, um, we as the church are to be preparing for Christ's coming. courtship and saving your first kiss for the altar? Well, I've grown up with that, so that's what my dad holds to, so that's what I would right, hold to, too, so. Right, because your first kiss means more than just if you give it away a lot of times, because if you give it away, it just really means nothing if you mm -hmm. give it away, like, ten times. <laughs> you know, thinking some, someone is handsome, it's not, like, it's not wrong. You know, that's perfectly normal. Yeah, and you gotta remember, like, if they're your brother in Christ, treat them as your brother. Yeah. Yeah, but most of, like unchristian girls are gonna talk about their boyfriends right now. <laughs> Here we are talking about our first kisses, which haven't been given away yet. Right. <laughs> so much more beautiful experience than the way we were raised and what we did. When I first met Don, the relationship was totally built on convenience and physical attraction. We didn't know anything about each other and we got married and we had a very rocky road to begin with. That went all the way up to about the three year mark where we actually, Don and I actually had an emotional divorce. We didn't leave each other, we were still cohabitating, but emotionally, we were totally divorced. We were never instructed on how to find a good mate. We went through a lot of pain that we did not have to go through. So yeah, we found ourselves through a dating relationship, but that's what we don't want our kids to go through. We don't want them to hit a three-year mark and be emotionally divorced. That was a horrible time. It really was, and just by the grace of God, we worked through it. All right. Did it go on two pages? Yeah. That's fine, the order's on that page. We just got an order, we just got an order, we just got an order. All right, sweetie, get her packed. When I first learned about courtship, I had to go digging for resources, and they were hard to find. So we started beforethekiss.com, uh, which is actually, it's pretty sweet because Kelly's the one that came up with that name. We offer um, encouragement and resources for physical and emotional purity. We're nobody special, we've just committed to this lifestyle. The more people we get on board, the more people who agree with this, the bigger the pool of future spouse I have for my girls. What does it mean to be ready for marriage? You know, can she cook? Can she clean? Can she run a house? Part of serving the Lord is raising a godly family. And I would, I'm preparing myself to be a homeschooling mom Stay at home, Mom. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And Don and I yourself. define our roles as husband and wife as what we believe is a biblical uh, role for marriage. I am the head of the family. I am the spear point. 
Don's role is a supportive role, helping me pursue the vision that I believe that God has given us as a family. I don't have to wear the pants of the family because he does. And if he prays about it and he messes up, it ain't my fault. <laughs> His is. <laughs> Sneak off and talk to you for a little while. Okay. I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just going to step outside for a minute. <sighs> Ross called me. Yeah? Yeah. And he said he was interested in getting to know Kelly better. And I told him I was fine with it. Okay. Well, Kelly would be really excited to hear about that. He asked me not to tell her. I forget the words that he used. I don't know if he used the term secret or not, but... With not telling Kelly, that's probably a good thing because she gets excited really fast. Yeah. It's good to know his intent. We need to figure out if he's the person that God's got for Kelly. shake my hand, so I shook it back, which was kind of funny because we've never done that before. He hugs Ron and Don, and I think that's great. And I've just never, he and I have never hugged. Glad you guys can come yeah. see Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Like it. I I, yeah, I've had yet never seen anything. I think I've been to the Nutcracker once. This is the first time we're going in public together, so there's natural questions from people. Maybe I'll be able to say, well, actually, yeah, we are getting to know each other. So I'm excited that there's somebody like that in my life, because there hasn't been for a while. And I uh, appreciate you coming on and taking the time to, uh, to really honor God and honor you this So let's pray, and then we're going to see some awesome, awesome names. Father God, we thank you for tonight. There's some of us in this audience that we're not really sure about what we think about you, Jesus. And so for that, person sitting there tonight, we pray specifically for them that they would hear your voice tonight as we remember the goodness, the grace, the mercy, and how awesome you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Four weeks.
You know yeah. he's attracted to her. And she's attracted to him. There's chemistry. You can feel it. You know it's there. But I want Kelly to be very careful when dealing with Ross because he has saved his first kiss and Kelly hasn't. Ross might want her for his wife's first kiss. Super 8 video, and I got it put on a DVD. Aww. It's not very good quality because it's kind of shaky, but you can still see enough to know. Oh my goodness, I'm so what excited. Y'all were like back then. Well, the input's that one. Well, both of them have an input, but hey, yeah, this is the one. But I gotta have the TV this. on, don't I? Yeah. Oh Look my at goodness. That. There's oh my Hyper gosh. Kelly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at those pigtails! <laughs> I love that hippity hop. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that dog that looks real. I thought that was real. <laughs> Were you telling me what to do? <laughs> oh yeah, you can see that I'm directing this. Now she'll put the bear down. You know, she'll pick it back up. I have no idea why. Because <laughs> you have to have somebody. security growing up in my family. So when I left home for college, there was a huge loss there that I was not prepared for. And I think that that tore my heart in ways that, um, that I, I didn't know how to deal with. Um, and then my parents got divorced and that was another um, big, big hurt. So I was pretty lost after that. When her dad and I got divorced, it affected Kelly greatly. And I think that really can make a young person very wary, of probably, of getting married. When it evolved into the courtship thing, it was, it was just very foreign to me, very strange that, that she would want to do that. I think the divorce really did cause her to gravitate towards something that seemed safe, a lot safer to her in trying to find someone. So the hurts were deep and I think have been good in the long run, making me really question what's important and question what family means and question a commitment between a man and a wife. And it made me rethink dating. I'm not interested in being someone's ex-girlfriend. I'm interested in being someone's wife. Hello, you've reached Ross Levitt. Please leave a message. Thanks. 
Hey Ross, it's Ron. Um, can you give me a call? I uh, wanted to see if you're interested in maybe me and you meeting. So we need to find out about the first kiss, if that's a deal breaker. And it's kind of volatile because nobody wants to come out and say, you know, there might be something going on here. But we need to know if this is a dead end or not. Hey, can you call me? I would like to meet with you tomorrow. Over that way. So fun hanging out with you. <laughs> this is what I miss when I talk to you on the phone and I ask you what they're doing, what are they doing right now? And I don't know. I know it's hard, Mom. You want more grandbabies, don't you? It's not that. <laughs> no. You don't? You don't want more grandbabies? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're happy. Yeah. And I know in order for you to be happy, you would like to be married and have children. So, of course, I want that for you. See, I, I, I get the, the, the waiting to, to be married to have sex. Uh, that's the way I was brought up. That's what I practiced. So I'm all for that. But what I don't understand is why a young lady that's mature enough to decide to, to live away from home by herself is not mature enough to decide who she wants to date. That I don't understand. Uh, well... I mean, I think most people get the advice of their friends over the people that they are dating. I think it's kind of a normal, natural thing. But not before you actually date them. It is, it is kind of hard to understand until you see it, but I don't know if I've told you about, I was really happy about it. Ron met with one guy that somebody wanted to set me up with. They went for coffee and talked and it came out that this guy had some really different religious beliefs that but certain things were okay. Could you a, a, a coffee date as well as... Maybe, but why? If I don't have to. Why would I waste my time and my <laughs> heart? That's a, that's a weird way of looking at it. You want Ron to waste his time, no. but you don't want to waste your time? No. If I don't have to get my emotions involved in it, then it's an easier decision. Well, but it, it's not emotion at that point. It's just getting to know the person. He meets with them first because this person would be coming into his family. He's the head of the family, so he really does need to come through Ron. Well, he's really not the head of your family. You're the head of your family. If you're really interested in getting married, it seems to me that you, you're, you're sheltering yourself too much. Yeah. If, if I were a 30-year-old man and a 30-year-old woman that I met somewhere and was interested in telling me that I had to go talk to somebody else before I would could we could go out together. I'd be long gone. Why and is would, that? Why? I think it's weird. <laughs> I'll go with you. I'll go with you. I'll go with you, okay? She didn't get married. It's your life and obviously you have to leave it the way you want to. But, you know I, I know it, it bothers your mom that you're away from home. And she worries about you a lot. And when she worries about you, I worry about you. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> you know, you, you're up there. You've got Ron as, as your advocate. If you came back here, I would be glad to be your advocate. <laughs> thanks. If I did move back, I would want that. I would need somebody to be my advocate. Your offer is huge. That means a lot. So, thank you. So, courtship. Again, I've got all the girls. Mm -hmm. So, I'm interested in, in the boys' perspective. Uh -huh. You, so you've never dated, you have no girlfriends, you've been saving your first kiss. Mm -hmm. Okay. And success so far? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your, what's your plans for a young lady? That she will have saved her first kiss or? I, that would certainly be, that would be wonderful if that had been her perspective. Um, if she had a different past and had come to that conviction later on, 
I mean, certainly I would prefer that not be the case. Um, but I, but the most important thing is where she's at right now. When you've had when you've made mistakes in the past, God uses it. Exactly. And the and the important thing would be that she's letting God use her where she's at and is open about whatever things she's done in the past. That's like step one. From my conversation with Ross, he understands God's grace. So, There's potential here. Uh, I think the verse is the most important thing is to find out if this is a relationship that God wants to bloom into something and believe that God's going to walk you through this process and he's the one that's going to orchestrate the whole thing. Uh, all right. Be blessed, my friend. <laughs> oh, you are a good hugger. <laughs> We're just totally wrong and just totally not in the know to disagree with with your philosophy to feel differently about things. How does that? How do you see us? I see you. I see you as like really wanting the best for me. I don't see you as a bad person. I just you haven't come to see what I've come to see out of it, but that's okay because you are at a very different point in your life. Some people say, you know, try to learn from other people's mistakes. And I think maybe you're, you're trying to learn from my mistakes, but you've kind of gone way out there. I think that there's a happy medium between what I did and what you're doing. I'd like to see you come a little bit closer to the middle between you and me. Okay, what would that look like? That would mean to be a little more active rather than passive about meeting people. Okay, so, but, and I've heard you talk about specifics, though. You say things I'm not interested in, like get on a website or go to a singles group. And like, I'm not interested in meeting people that way. How do you know that, that God's plan, if there is one, is not right there in that group of people. How do you know God is not leading me to try to, to convince you to do these things? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mom. <laughs> yeah. God can guide your steps, but you need to be stepping. You need to be proactive rather than passive. He doesn't expect someone to just do nothing and then he does it all. He doesn't do all the work. Right, right. The decision that I make to be proactive is to prepare myself to be a good wife and mother. Well, like, that's an active thing. That's you're, something that you I You should exercise. be there by now. Also, I'm actively waiting and trusting him to How make it happen. actively wait? <laughs> it's just not actively the way you, you want me to be active, I guess. Do you really believe that God is in control? I really do. Why? We have free will. Why do yeah, you think he's we in do control? Have I like the idea of trusting him with it. Sure, but don't wait for him to bring somebody to your door. Why? It's not going to happen. What if he does? What are you going to say? Yay! <laughs> you know, I will change my tune. <laughs> you might be 50 years old then. You know, I don't know. Tick-tock, tick-tock. <laughs> the biological clock. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It'll be worth the wait. It will. I'm kind of wishing that I had something to tell my family when I saw them, like, hey, I'm really getting to know someone and I really like him. I didn't want them getting their hopes up because I wanted to also guard their hearts. Of course, I can't help but think a little bit about my future with Ross. I'm just enjoying the feelings and the, the joy of it while trying to keep it in 
relative control and check. As I'm spending time with Ross, I really am attracted to him. I find that I can't really look into his face or his eyes too deeply. I have to kind of look away. Since the man is the one that kind of leads the relationship, I was pretty sure that he was taking it seriously, getting to know our family. Hi, Ross. Hi. You don't think I'm nuts? Mm -hmm. Can we trade places? That darn so I can look out the window? Yeah. <laughs> Are you no okay problem. with that? We're stepping into another level here. We're becoming very close friends, and I can see a natural step in the future that, you know, we would be like family to each other. Number one, because he's really cool. I'm really enjoying him. I, I really am. He's, he's fun to be around. And, you know, be honest with you, in a house full of women, it's nice to have guys around. <laughs> <laughs> this is all crap. Yes, that one's all. That's me, though. Yeah, that's for me. It's not like picking your legs up, yeah. As soon as class is over, usually one of my first thoughts is, oh, when am I going to hear from Ross again? Did he email me? Did he Facebook me? I really need to check my phone. I'm also playing with the idea of like maybe we'd be a good match, maybe we'd be a good husband and wife team, maybe we could raise kids together. I'm feeling pretty confident that God is doing something. I feel like I can trust God in this. If my relationship with Ross does go to the next step, he would be what I would consider my leader. When I get married to my husband, when I give my heart to him, I am giving everything. I am giving up the right to have my own rights. I'm giving up the right to say, well, I believed this before you and you're not changing me. In the Bible, the man is given the leadership role the protector role and the provider role. The woman is given the nurturing role, the childbearing role, the tender role, the feelings role. I want the roles the way God designed them because I trust God that he knows a little bit more about this than I do. Oh, that makes sense. We're doing as 
developing the situation. So an interesting sidebar in this whole thing is Paul and Savannah hitting it off. He's 18, she's 13. When they become 25 and 20, if this relationship is, is still going strong, who knows? We'll see what happens. It's the glory of courtship. You know, the pool of people to choose from um, just staying out there yet until courtship becomes more of a norm again. Yeah, the idea is just to go real slow and easy and, and just try to get it smooth and controlled at first. Ron is very hopeful that Ross and Kelly get married. He likes boy toys. He likes male friends. Now he has given his heart away, some to Ross. If it does work out, then we'll have a wedding on the rise. I was on Facebook and saw that Ross had posted something about his friend who had his whole life ahead of him died violently. His younger brother had shot him in the chest and killed him instantly from um, an accident. I got very concerned because he was saying that it was God's will for this young man to die for his life to end abruptly and violently. And I still, I could not believe that. I mean, it was just too much for me to take in and say, somebody actually believes this. So Ross shared with me the tragedy that had happened to his friend. While I appreciated Ross sharing his heart, there was one part in there I disagreed with, the part about it being God's plan. I feel that God causing a bad thing to happen is a little bit different from God allowing something terrible to happen. I mean, he posted that on Facebook for all his friends to see, for his family to see. That mother just lost a son by the hand of her other son. How do you recover from that? How do you go on? <sighs> At that point, I was done. I couldn't see putting Kelly under authority like that. And I even told her, I said, you need to be prepared that if you do marry Ross and you go to a funeral, he could go up to the person and say, I'm so sorry about your loss. It's God's will, though. What a bummer, huh? But we know God's perfect. And then walk off. And I said, there you are with a broken person, and you are under his authority. You have to walk away with him. I saw Ross's note again today. The note he wrote when his friend died? Yeah. I mean, I don't believe God is separate from the situation. No, I believe he's in control. Yeah, he is in control. But <clears throat> that he stuck the gun in the, in the young boy's hands and had him pull the trigger. I just don't believe that. Right. Is that something that you can submit to? You need to decide. It wasn't a huge, like, deal breaker kind of thing for me. My hope is that my husband will love the Lord with everything he has and the little details on theology. I think that if our hearts are towards the Lord, we can work them out.
Ross writes me back and he says, I think it's okay that we disagree about these theological differences. And at that point, I felt really happy about that. I thought, great, that's a, that's a heart that I would, I would want. Being so open with Ross about these things was a new place for me. I've never shared such deep things with another man, at least not recently, at least in the last seven or eight years. It, I mean, it was just a feeling of, I'm making myself vulnerable here. Got the email from Ross just the day before that he wasn't coming. So it takes a little while to sink in to how that makes me feel, which is, wow, that makes me feel pretty unimportant. I felt like even though nothing had been said to me, that we were in the courtship process by this point. The thoughts were constant of maybe Ross really does want to court me and they just didn't want me to find out so they're like making everything look like Ross canceled. Maybe he's saying he's canceled but he's really going to come and he's going to ask if I am interested but he just wanted me to be surprised. Maybe he's really not interested but that didn't make sense either because he had been acting interested. What did I miss? Why did it seem like I was a priority and then suddenly I feel like I'm not as important as I was? God, I just want to ask you to show me what to do as I'm meeting with Ross. I ask that your will be done in this conversation. And the guy that would be really cool if this was the one. I would, uh, Ross is a good guy, and it would be cool if this was the one you got picked out for Kelly. Oh, let me get out of here. Get a hug. Who taught you how to hug? Uh, I, probably my mother, I suppose. Yeah? Cause you like give some of the best hugs, I tell you. Really? For real. So, it's awesome. So, thanks for driving all the way over here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for meeting with me. So, we talk, you and I talked briefly on the phone. Mm -hmm. And you said that you were interested in getting to know Kelly a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I want, I want to try and find out what your intentions are, what, what you're thinking. And I just I want to walk around that a little bit, just kind of talk it out and, so that you and I are on the same page and we know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and actually, uh, as I've gotten to know, to, uh, to know her and you guys uh, a little better and talking about uh, talking about, uh, about about more specific issues than we got to before yeah. 
Um, I mean, the short answer is, I, I, I started to see that there, there are some differences that I think would, um, you know, would, would preclude going, going forward. Okay. Um, let's, let's walk around that a little bit because I want more details. What, where's the, what are the issues? What are you thinking? Um, there are things like the, the theological issues. And that's, that's not something that I see as dividing people from being friends. But for a marriage, I think that having those, for me, th those are things that I feel strongly about. Right. And those are, and those affect the way that I live and, and the way that I, you know, the way that, the way that I respond to, to trials and difficult situations in life. If my relationship with God, the way I follow God, is the center of my life, the most, the most important part of my life, then that's something that, that, that where you know, I need to be walking parallel. Setting Kelly aside, because Kelly's mine and she's my responsibility, mm -hmm. um, setting that aside and just speaking to my friend Ross, who I've really enjoyed getting to know and, and and I really like it. So I think you're a pretty, pretty stand-up guy. Yeah, you've got some differences here, but does God feel those differences are that important? Mm -hmm. For now, I've, I've made my decision. Okay. Well, I mean, that doesn't change the friendship that I have with your family right. at all, because that wasn't the basis of it in the first place, right? You're a great guy. I enjoy you and, and love having you around. So. Yeah, we, uh, that, that should stay the same. Mm -hmm. I agree. Call home. Hey. Hey there. Yeah. All right, uh, wanted to update you and just want to give you a, an idea of what, what we talked about. So, um, yeah. um, the whole theology thing's a deal killer for him. Yep. That theology is is that important to him that it was like, no, we really need to be on the same page of this. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's a deal killer for him. Okay, so then it's a deal killer, right? It's over? Yeah. I don't know. I, I got a lot to think of. I, I got to process this out, so. Okay. I'll talk to you in a little while. I love you too, honey. Bye bye. My mind is trying to fill in the blanks and my mind is trying to make sense of it all. I kind of felt like, wait, you must be wrong. No, I have the emails that say it's not a deal breaker for him. Like that was my first thought. And then I realized, no, he just talked to him. Like, all right, so that must be true. Then of course, then I had to ask the question, well, why did we spend so much time together then? <laughs> what was all this for? We will keep you as long as we need to. Yeah, when you moved in, I realized that you might not ever get married. Coming through. <laughs> That's the swan. That's Cygnus the swan right there. Cool. Yeah. That is Vega. That's in Lyra. We learned so much during this courtship like with Ross. Think that looks like a heart. Kelly walked away with a protected heart. 
She doesn't ever have to worry about seeing Ross again and thinking, yeah, I did kiss him, you know, but they didn't kiss. There's nothing there. There, there was never anything there other than an attraction. And people feel attractions to other people walking down the street. See, when I get underneath the stars like this, it's like, this can't be an accident. There's yeah. just no yeah. way. We totally believe that God will turn the world upside down to put two people together that he wants together. That's what Kelly is doing is she's staking the rest of her life on is God going to come through on this? I think what a woman really wants to know is, am I beautiful and am I lovable? Could a man really love me? Could a man really want me? Could a man really want to get to know me deeply and want to keep me? <laughs> and um, probably some women find it in a good husband and in a good man and they enjoy that marriage or they enjoy that relationship. But I have just found so much more in the Lord than what I ever found in a boyfriend relationship. And even in my own father's relationship, there's still something lacking. So, I mean, I've just found with God what um, I've never found before. <laughs> so I can't imagine those needs being met any other way. <laughs> 